First of all, the real estate and construction segment is a very interesting segment, and as we see across Canada today, it is booming no matter what part of the country we're in. Whether you be in Vancouver, whether you be in Saskatchewan, or whether you be in, uh, in Toronto, obviously we see construction all over the place. We see uh, you know, cranes building these new complexes, and it, it raises its own issues. And some people raise the issue about availability, you know, where to build, uh, how to finance it, and at the very end of the project, uh, how to account for the profit, and what do I do with the taxes associated with the profit uh, that's earned on these real estate projects. What we do find, though, there's a lot of risk. Um, and the risk is not only in the building and the construction element and the financing of it, element of it, but it's also having enough liquidity left over to pay for the taxes that are owed on these projects themselves. And because it's risky, uh, one of the things we're seeing because of the complexity and the risk is people are sharing that burden. There's a lot of uh, sharing joint venture partnerships and the like, and therefore that creates a little bit more complexity, especially when dealing with taxes overall. Uh, as to who bears the burden, how much does each bear, partner bear, and how is it computed at the end of the day? With, with tax minimization, um, like I said, it, it is minimization, not zero taxes. Um, and just like anything, you get a greater return when you assume more risk. The lower tax rate doesn't come with no risk or it's, there's a correlation. Your tax rate goes down there's a risk component to it. From a tax perspective, the challenge that comes up time and time again is developers and construction folks that are in this industry are always looking to expand and grow their business, and so they're using all of their available cash flow to invest in the next project. Some of that cash flow has to be designated and earmarked for income taxes. And oftentimes, it's the last thing that's remembered. Uh, or it's the last thing that's planned for. Whether intentionally or not, most people are like to reinvest in a future project, in a future development, and not worry about the taxes until, unfortunately, we sp spend some time with them to say, well, we need to come up with some cash flow to pay for these taxes. And that's one element of risk that's sometimes overlooked. Another key, key risk from a tax perspective is valuation. As, as a general rule, transactions occur uh, at fair market value for purposes of the Tax Act. Um, so valuation plays a role in a lot of transactions, whether they're external transactions, which presumably fair market value is easy to get at. When you're transferring stuff among entities within a controlled group, valuation becomes very important and now it's artificial. It's becoming harder and harder to get uh, a grips on valuations. Uh, we see real estate companies that have created portfolio of assets, whether it be income producing properties in, in retail, in multi-residential properties, or commercial properties, and the values are skyrocketing. Uh, the challenges that faces many owners is that when's the right time uh, to possibly do an estate freeze? Is it, should it be sooner or later? Uh, we deal with a lot of people that believe that uh, prices will keep going up inevitably, and so now is the right time to do the freeze. Other people are of the belief that, no, you know, it will come down at some significant point, and they're waiting. If you take a, maybe a typical real estate client where they do have a portfolio of assets, so when they sell that asset, they will trigger a gain. If they've held the asset for a long period of time and they've treated it as a capital property, not as something that they intended to sell from day one, then our taxation system does have preferential rates where uh, the, there is a lower tax paid on, on that amount. But again, if you sell your entire portfolio and you're just you're going to reinvest in another portfolio, you don't have your gross proceeds to go and invest. So valuations is causing a bit a, of a challenge. One from a pure succession plan, when's the right time to do a you know, proper freeze to pass on the future growth to the next generation? Uh, some people are worried that you know, skyrocketing valuations, meaning the next generation is going to be worth significantly more than the existing generation. Uh, valuations are driving bad behavior in some cases. People aren't selling their assets because they don't want to pay the tax associated with increasing valuation. So it's an interesting dilemma for a lot of people. When you go outside of Canada, or, or even to a lesser extent, when you go to a different province within Canada, there's differences. Things are not 
always the exact same way that they are at, at, in your home base or your local geo, uh, geography. We find a lot of real estate owners, for example, understand the current marketplace, but when they go abroad, uh, it's an education. It's an education of the tax system, uh, of what has to be filed, complied with, and the like. It's an education of the tax system itself in terms of, for example, estate taxes, succession duties, and the like. So it ends up becoming an education. And so what we find from a lot of owners is uh, it, it takes a process. It's a process of understanding in order to understand what they're getting into and then how to deal with that. And I would say a significant driver that we see in the marketplace today is uh, to manage risk and to grow their businesses. Um, so we see a lot of consolidation happening in certain industries. Uh, good examples in the professional service industry, for example, architects, engineers have gone through this process uh, where number one is they're needing to grow in the marketplace and growth is achieved through consolidating, acquiring, and, and merging businesses together. We also see consolidation as a mechanism to gain greater efficiencies and obviously greater profitability for the shareholders themselves. Tax should never be driving a process. Um, and that's coming from a tax person. It should be a key component in the decision-making process. Uh, and it should be included early in the decision-making process. At the end of the day, whether you're buying something, you're selling something, uh, you're entering into new territory, you need to do it based on its own merit. And tax is one of the components to, to get to a uh, conclusion of whether you should proceed or not. It shouldn't be the only one.